please kneel. O God, who by the passion of Christ your Son, our Lord, abolished the death inherited from ancient sin by every succeeding generation, grant that just as, being conformed to him, we have borne by the law of nature the image of the man of earth, so that by the sanctification of grace we may bear the image of the man of heaven, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the sons of men. So he shall startle many nations, kings, shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what he have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before the Lord like a young plant and like a root out of a dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. As one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne out our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. Each has turned to their own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, Yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain when you make his life an offering for sin. He shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. 
Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. In you, O oh Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice set me free, into your hands I command my spirit. It is you who will redeem me, Lord. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I command my spirit. In the face of all my foes, I am a reproach, an object of scorn to my neighbors and of fear to my friends. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I command my spirit. Those who see me in the street run far away from me. I am like the dead forgotten by all, like a thing thrown away. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I command my spirit. But as for me, I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My life is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of those who hate me. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I command my spirit. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your love. Be strong, let your, let your heart take courage. O oh, who hope in the Lord. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I command my spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize for our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. 
Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was here because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obeyed him. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Christ became obedient for us even to death, dying on the cross. Therefore God raised him on high, and gave him a name above all other names. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. After they had eaten the supper, Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers, together with police from the chief priest and the Pharisees. And they came there with the lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing that all was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, whom are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he. So if you're looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Anas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? Peter said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter was also standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I've always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, 
one of the police standing nearby, struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? If I've spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I've spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock Crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. They replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Do you ask this on your own or do others tell you about me? I am not a Jew, am I? Your nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So you are a king? You say that I'm a king, for this I was born. For I came into the world to testify to the truth, and everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is the truth? After he had said this, Pilate went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him. But you have a costume that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was abandoned. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, king of the Jews. And they struck him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him to you, out to you, to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priest and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. They answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and power to crucify you? You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. 
Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. They, there they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription made, written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the people read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews. Pilate, but an Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified him, had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, in order to fulfill the scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of full sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full, full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was the, a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission. So he came and removed his body. 
Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred weight. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. I thirst. An interesting phrase that Jesus uses today in our passion narrative, I thirst. What is Jesus thirsting for? Is he thirsting for a glass of water? Is he thirsting for uh, some wine? What is Jesus thirsting for? In many ways, Jesus is thirsting to do the will of God in his life. He is thirsting to bring glory to his Father in heaven. He is thirsting to be obedient to the Creator, obedient to his Father, obedient to the Spirit. The thirst to show the glory of God through obedience. Jesus is thirsting for humanity. He is thirsting for humanity to come to know the love of God. He is thirsting for humanity to be reconciled to the Creator Father in heaven. He is thirsting that all humanity may come to the cross of Christ, that all may be put away sin, that all will put away ego, he is thirsting for humanity to be back in the Garden of Eden, to be with God in heaven. I thirst. And then finally, Jesus is thirsting for you. Jesus is thirsting for you to know the love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus is thirsting for you personally to come to know him, the man Jesus Christ, the God Jesus Christ, thirsting for you, us, me, to come to the Lord and to say yes, to know that the things of the world do not hold glory, but rather it is Jesus Christ, the cross, that holds glory. He is thirsting for us to know that true peace, true love, true forgiveness comes from the cross. From our Father, from our God dying on the cross. Jesus is thirsting for each and every one of us to come to him. When someone asks us, what do you thirst for? What will be your answer? Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, 
and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Almighty ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church, spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our most holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed to the Lord's holy church, to govern the holy people of God. Almighty ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you their Maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop Crosby, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty ever-living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer before your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully, through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty ever-living God, who make your church ever faithful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered. Look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Let 
us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty, ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear their prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty, ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord, Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right with sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest. Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you the one true God and Father of our human race. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office that our God and Lord May they wreck their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who suffer the consequence of the current pandemic, that God the Father may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, comfort to families, and salvation to all the victims who, who have died. Almighty and ever-living God, 
only support of our human weakness. Look with compassion upon the sorrowful condition of your children who suffer because of this pandemic. Relieve the pain of the sick. Give strength to those who care for them. Welcome into your peace those who have died. And throughout this time of tribulation, grant that we may all find comfort in your merciful love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loose and fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty and ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Behold the wood of the cross in which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us adore. Behold the wood of the cross in which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us adore. Behold the wood of the cross in which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us adore. Please kneel. Due to the current COVID restrictions, we will have a communal veneration of the cross. There will be no individual veneration of the cross. Oh, sacred head surrounded by crown of piercing thorn, O bleeding head so wounded, reviled and put to scorn, the power of death comes on you, the glow of life decays 
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Take your mask off. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my blood given up for you. I am the word that spoke and light was made. I am the seed that died to be reborn. I am the bread that comes from heaven above. I am the vine that fills your cup with joy. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my blood given up for you. I am the way that leads the exile home. I am the truth that sets the captive free. I am the life that raises up the dead. I am your peace, true peace, my gift to you. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my 
my blood given up for you. I am the lamb that takes away your sin. I am the gate that guards you night and day. You are my flock, you know the shepherd's voice. You are my own, your ransom is my blood. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my blood given up for you. I am the lamb that takes away your sin. I am the gate that guards you night and day. You are my flock, you know the shepherd's voice. You are my own, your ransom is my blood. Take and eat, take and eat. There is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my blood given up for you. I am the cornerstone that God has laid, a chosen stone and precious in his eyes. You are God's dwelling place, on me you rest, like living stones, a temple for God's praise. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my blood given up for you. I am the light that came into the world. I am the light that darkness cannot hide. I am the morning star that never sets. Lift up your face, in you my light will shine. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink. Take and drink, this is my blood given up for you.
Just a reminder, as you well know, come midnight tonight, we are back in shutdown slash lockdown. What that means for us simply is that we can now only have 15% capacity of the church, which is about 90 people. So starting tomorrow, uh, any tickets you may have for Christmas, Christmas, any tickets for Christmas, hopefully we don't need them. Any tickets you may have for Easter, they are no longer valid or usable. It will be a first come, first serve basis. So starting tomorrow, first come, first serve basis, and we can only allow 90 people in the church, which includes Father, the cantor, the musician, Minister of U the Holy, Extraordinary Minister of Holy Communion, and uh, so two ushers. So um, come early and uh, be kind, please. Also, uh, beginning this Sunday, and every Sunday during the lockdown, we will have Mass at 7 a.m., 8.30 a.m., 10.15 a.m., 12 noon p.m., and 1.30 p.m. So we've added two Masses on Sundays. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life, by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ. Preserve in us the work of your mercy, that partaking of this mystery, we may have life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. 